This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, welcome everyone. Bruch Abayim. Welcome to the Koilel Igra de Pirka on this fine Labor Day in New York City. I hope everyone is laboring away. Obviously, today is a day of labor. Amelos Batoira. Um, Adam la Amal Yulad, the Gemara says. Amal, the Marsha says, is Rosh Tevois. Le Amal, Lomoid, Amanas, Lulamed. Okay, we come, uh, this week's Parsha is Parshas Nitzavim. Parshas Nitzavim is always the Parsha we read right before Rosh Hashanah. Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kolochem Lefnei Hashem Aleikechem. You stand, all of you, today before Hashem your God. And the Zayar teaches us the word Hayoim is always a reference to Rosh Hashanah. And therefore we read this Parsha right before Rosh Hashanah, indicating that on Rosh Hashanah it's Atem Nitzavim Hayoim Kolchem Lefnei Hashem Lekechem. And amazingly in Parshas Nitzavim we encounter a very uh, unique mitzvah. Where the Torah says, Ki ha mitzvah hazois. Because this mitzvah, hayam, that I command you today, it's not hidden from you. It is not far. It is not in the heaven, Lamar, that you would say, Who will bring us up to the heaven? And take it for us. He, it is not overseas. Lemar, mi yaver lano, elaver ayam. Who will cross the seas? Vikachel lano, biashmienu oisavan asena. Ki karoi veilacha hadavar maoid. Because the matter is very close. Beficha, it's in your mouth. Uvelvavcha, and it's in your heart. La asoi soi to do it. So the Torah is speaking about a mitzvah, ki ha mitzvah hazois, and it's saying that this mitzvah, you may think it's overseas, you may think it's in the heaven, but it's not. Where is it? In fact, it's very close. It's not close, Rabbi say. This mitzvah is not close, it's very close. How close is very close? It's in your mouth, it's in your heart to do it. What is this mitzvah? That's the million dollar question. It is a mitzvah that you would have thought is out of reach. Because there's no mitzvah in the Torah where the Torah says, This mitzvah! It's not on the moon. It's not on Mars. By the way, Matzai Shabbos, I went outside at about 11.45. And I looked up to the heavens. And I looked at the moon. And lo and behold, I could not believe my eyes. There was a very bright star right next to the moon. I never saw anything like it in my life. An extremely bright star. And then I said, what? It's not even a bright star. It's a red star. Mars and the moon came together September 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th in a way that I don't know if it's been, but it was quite remarkable where you could see Mars and the moon. So there's, there's no mitzvah... And when somebody who knows astronomy or claims to know astronomy told me it was Jupiter, and next to it... No, he's wrong. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It was Mars. I, but I, anyway, I looked it up. But anyway, um, the, uh, there's no mitzvah in the Torah where it says that this mitzvah, uh, don't think it's over the moon, don't think it's out of space, don't think it's... No, it's not true. It's very close to you. So that means you would have thought it's very far. And uh, the Torah is saying it's in fact very close. So what is this mitzvah talking about? So Ramban says as follows. Ramban says, Ki ha-mitzvah zois al kol ha kula. It's referring to the whole Torah. The hanokha in what is correct. Ki al kol ha-toyro yeyomar ki kol ha-mitzvah shonokhim tzav chayon. The Ramban says it's not going on the whole Torah. Because uh, referring to the whole Torah it says, Call a mitzvah, but a mitzvah hazois ala tshuva hanizkeres. The mitzvah hazois is referring to the above mentioned mitzvah because in pasuk aleph the pasuk says ki vahashevoisa el levavecha veshavta ad hashem lekecha mitzvah 
It's a mitzvah that he commanded us to do this. Now it's interesting. The Ramban is learning that Ki HaMitzvah HaZois is referring to the mitzvah of Tshuva. Where did we ever identify the mitzvah of Tshuva? In the beginning of that parsha, it says, V'hashevoy sa'el vavecha, v'shavta. So it's a mitzvah that he's commanding us to do. Now, the Torah did not use an outright command, but interestingly, the language of the Pasuk is sort of uh, uh, somewhat of an in-between language. It implies you should, and it implies you will. The Hatam, the reason is Lamar, Kimia Nidachacha Bitsea Shamayim. Because if you're scattered to the end of the heavens, the Atabiado Amim, and you are in the hands of the nations, you can return to God. And do whatever I command you today. Because this matter is not, um, this matter is not concealed and far. It's very close. To do it, so according to Ramban, the Torah is referring to the mitzvah of tshuva, and the, you would have thought tshuva is difficult, and the Torah is saying no, tshuva is very easy. All it is is in your mouth and in your heart. In fact, the Balaturim says, why is tshuva referred to as hamitzvah azois? Why is tshuva compared to all the mitzvahs? Loimar shkula hi hatshuva keneged kol mitzvahs kulam. Tshuva is the equivalency of all the mitzvahs. So let's um, have the following analysis. What's very interesting is that the Rambam in Hilchash Tshuva identifies four ingredients of Tshuva. And the Rambam, the Rambam says, Umahi Tshuva. I'm sorry, it's not so easy to read. Number one, Husheyazoiv. The sinner should forsake the sin. And remove it from his thoughts. Furthermore, he should commit never to do it again. One should likewise regret the past. Shenemar ki achare shuvi nichamti. After I repented, I regretted. Varacha v'achare hivadi. And after I became known, safakti al yorech. V'yoyed all of yoydea talumais. And the one who can testify about secrets can should be able to testify. Shelo yashuv l'zeh achet la'olam. You need to confess with your lips, the Laimar, and to say, in Yanois Elu Shagmar Belibai, you need to confess and articulate with your mouth all of the commitments that you made. Now, Marv Rabbi Say, Tshuva consists of four ingredients, which means, comes Yom Naran, and a person is inspired, and he, and he, he manages to keep up for the drasha, and he hears, very inspiring words. And he says, this year, I'm going to open up my checkbook and I'm going to write a $10,000 check for the Kol Nidre appeal. What has he accomplished in the realm of tshuva? Nothing. Nothing. He has not done tshuva. Not only has he not done tshuva 90%, he has not done tshuva 70%, he has not done tshuva 10%, and he has not done tshuva 1%. Tzedakah is a wonderful mitzvah. It's a zechus, perhaps, to ward off a bad decree, but it's not tshuva. It's a very easy uh, way for the Sahara to make a person feel like he had a se- successful high holiday season. And uh, one thing I guarantee you, the shul will take your money happily. But, have you accomplished anything in the realm of tshuva? No. Number one, you need to stop sinning. Number two, you need to commit not to sin again. Number three, you need to regret your sin. And number four, you need to confess and articulate your commitments. Without that, you didn't do tshuva. You could sing your heart out during the Nisana Toikef. You could clap yourself until you're sore 
saying vidoy. You could bow down during uh, Aleinu and get your pants dirty from top to bottom. That's very nice. It's all fine and wonderful. It doesn't matter. It's not tshuva. Tshuva is, you got to stop sinning, you have to regret, you have to commit, and you have to confess. And therefore, the million dollar question is, how can the Torah say that it is an easy mitzvah? Does anybody find it easy to change? It is very difficult to change. Who changes? Most people are still dealing with the habits and routines that they dealt with 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. It's not easy to change. Even one mitzvah, now, Marv Rabbi every mitzvah stands on its own. Meaning, even if a person doesn't do tshuva for uh, eating treif, they could do tshuva for chilo Shabbos. And even if a person... Um, doesn't do tshuva for geneva, they could do tshuva for not for speaking by davening. One thing has nothing to do with the other. You could, and therefore one has to deal with every avera separately. But one thing, l'chayra, nobody would ever say, is if I would a- a stop a thousand people on the ch- street and say, which mitzvah in the Torah is the easiest mitzvah, I guarantee you nobody would say it's tshuva. If I would stop a thousand people on the street, what's the hardest mitzvah in the Torah? Maybe over 900 of them would say it's doing tshuva. I mean, if someone is in a bad habit, it's very hard to change. So how could the Torah say it's not in the heavens? It seems to be. How could the Torah say it's not overseas? It does seem to be there. Especially, Marv Rabbi the two hardest parts of tshuva are, number one, aziva sachet, stopping to sin. Stopping to sin is the hardest part of tshuva. I mean, if somebody is in the habit of doing an Avera, whether it's uh, insulting people, whether it's arrogance, whether it's anger, whether it's whatever it might be, if someone is in a habit, it's hard, to, it's hard to kick the habit. The same way people don't find it easy to stop smoking, it's not easy to change one's behavior. And therefore, how could the, how could the Torah say, tshuva is easy? Furthermore, Another important part of tshuva is regret. Now, we stand there on Yom Kippur, but do we feel real remorse? Real remorse is when uh, you let your wallet out of sight, and you turn around and it's not there anymore, and you say, how could I have been so stupid not to be vigilant and guard my money? Then for weeks and weeks, you're kicking yourself. How could I do something so foolish? Do we feel that same type of regret on Yom Kippur? Uh, if you're an honest person, you would probably say no. We don't. Do we feel, hey, how could I have let myself get angry? How could I, ha, what, do you, what does a person feel more regret about? Losing $1,000 or doing an Avera? Losing $100 or doing an Avera? So we have a hard time feeling regret. We have a hard time stopping to sin. And yet, if you don't regret and stop sinning, you cannot do tshuva. So how could the Torah say, tshuva is easy, asks Rav Itzala Peterberg. Rav Itzala Peterberg was born in the year 1837. And he was nifter in 1907. He was the primary disciple, certainly one of the three primary disciples of Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. And Rabbi, together with the author of Kelm and Rav Aftali Amsterdam, and the uh, the uh, Rabbi Sol Salanter would praise his three Talmidim and the praise that he gave Rabbi Itzla Peterberg, as he called Rabbi Itzla the Lamdin. Lamdin meaning he was a, a very a, a proficient and a preeminent. Torah scholar in, in halacha and in learning. He wrote Shas Yitzchak's pre Yitzchak. But Rav Yitzchak, uh, Itzla Petterberg, Rav Yitzchak Blazer, was the main disseminator of the Musr of Rabbi Shal Salanter. And he writes in his classic work, Koich Le'ar, he says that in the Sefer Reishis Chachma, Perak Aleph, he brings the words of the Ramban that Ki HaMitzvah Hazois over here refers to Tshuva. And he says, according to my uh, according to 
the Ramban, in my opinion, this fits very well into the Pasuk. Kid karai ve'lecha hadavar ma'id b'ficha. B'ficha is vidoy. Uvilvavcha and kabola ala asid. So this fits very well into the Pasuk. Ki karai ve'lecha hadavar ma'id. B'ficha is vidoy. Uvilvavcha is kabola ala asid. Now, the Ravitzla Petterberg is sort of bothered that we know the main ingredients of tshuva is azivas hachet and kabbalah ala asid, charata and vidoy. So why would the pasuk only say beficha vidoy uvelvavcha kabbalah ala asid? What about azivas hachet and charata? And Ravitzla Petterberg says you have to say charata is included in vidoy. Beficha, because someone who confesses, it is an offshoot of regret. And azivas hachet is included in uvelvavcha, because the, what, what causes Kabbalah al-Asid is azivas hachet. But it is most interesting. Why would the Torah explicitly refer to vidoy, beficha, and Kabbalah al-Asid, Uvilvavcha, and so to speak, omit what is no, the more important ingredients in a way, and that is charata and aziva sachet. But furthermore, the pashib shot in the pasuk that the matter is very close. Beficha uvilvavcha la soisai. That implies chuba is very easy because it's only in your mouth, it's only in your heart. But everybody knows that tshuva is very hard because every year comes Yom Kippur, we're doing tshuva for the same things we did tshuva for last year and the year before and the year before and we have not really successfully changed those things that needed correction for years and years. However, says Ravitzel Paterberg, if we pay careful attention to the language of the Pasuk, the Pasuk really is only referring to Vidoy and Kabbalah ala Asid. And the Torah is not really even discussing Charata and Aziva Sachet. And now the question is, Rabbi Isai, if you put aside Charata and you put aside Aziva Sachet, which are the hard parts of Tshuva, and now you're left with Kabbalah ala Asid, and vidoy, those are the easy parts of tshuva. If you could ignore for a moment aziva sachet and harata, then tshuva is taka very easy. You ready? Watch this. Chatasi avisi pashati lefanecha. Wow! And I could even sing a nice song. Ah na 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 na. Right? Oh sham nu boga nu gozal nu di bar nu doifi. Ah na 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 na. Right? It's like a, a little uh, jingle over there. So saying vidoy is not really that difficult. And the truth is, once you've stopped sinning, then it's not really that difficult to accept upon yourself not to do it again. So in a sense, yes, the whole package of tshuva is very, very hard, but the ingredients that the Pasuk are referring to explicitly, namely Kabbalah ala asid and Vidoy, are actually very, very easy. But now the question is, why does the Torah sort of ignore the hard parts of tshuva and say, yeah, it's very, very easy. That's like saying, it's very easy to win a gold medal in the Olympics, right? Ignoring the part of actually swimming 50 uh, laps, but once you're within a millimeter of the end, it's very, very easy to touch the wall. Shkoyach. But, uh, you know, try getting there and beating all the other uh, swimmers. So Ravitzla Petterberg offers uh, a remarkable approach and for a moment I want to take you to the Rambam. This is an incredible Rambam. The Rambam says, Kol, there's a Rambam, Hilchas Shuva, Perak Aleph, Halach Aleph, Kol HaMitzvah Shabbat Torah. All the mitzvahs in the Torah, Bein Asa, Bein Loi Asa, Bein Loi Sase, whether or not Loi Sase, Im Avar Adam Alachas Mehem, Bein Bezodam, Bein Mishkaga, whether you violate them, the Mezid or Beshoi Gate. Kishe Yaset Shuva, when you do Shuva, 
V'yoshev mecheto, and you repent, chayiv lehezvadois, you need to say vidoy. This is the most difficult Rambam. All the mitzvahs in the Torah, whether an say, whether a lois say, when you do tshuva, you have to say vidoy. What do you mean, when I do tshuva? Why doesn't the Rambam say, I have to do tshuva? The Rambam says, when I do tshuva, you have to say vidoy. What do you mean, when I do tshuva, you have to say vidoy? The Rambam is mashma, you don't have to do tshuva. You hear this, Rabbi Yisai? So you're going to go home, your wife's going to say, what did you learn today? He said, the, the rabbi taught that the Rambam says you don't have to do tshuva. She's going to say, get out of that shir, go to a different shir, go to Agar de Pirka in Muncie or something. But that's what the, what can I do, Rabbi Yisai? That's what the Rambam says. The Rambam holds, you don't have to do tshuva. You hear that? The Rambam's opinion is, if you do tshuva, you have to say vidoy. But you can say there's a chiv to do tshuva. And Rav Obam, in his commentary to the Rambam Hochas Tshuva, Ulochayra mashma midivei ha-Rambam, she'etzem ha-tshuva eno mitzvah sasei, ela kishayasa tshuva v'yashav mecheto y'chayv les vadois. And that is because vidu is a mitzvah sasei, but not tshuva. And the Minchas Chinuch agrees that that's proud in the Rambam. That tshuva is not a mitzvah, but if you do it, you have a mitzvah to say vidoy. But if you don't do tshuva, you won't be punished for not doing tshuva. You'll just be punished for the avira you did. Now, the Ramban in Parshas Nitzavim learns that tshuva is a mitzvah, as we just learned. Ki ha mitzvah hazois is a mitzvah of tshuva. But the Rambam does not hold tshuva is a mitzvah. You hear that? Boaz, you hear that pshat? You look like you're enjoying it. The Rambam holds tshuva is not a mitzvah. If you do it, you better say vidoy, but you don't have to do it. The Rambam learns you have to do it. The Rambam says if you do it, say vidoy, you don't have to do it. So what we're going to... Uh, try to explain today is what could be pshat in the Rambam? Why would the Rambam hold? That there's no mitzvah of tshuva. You don't have to do tshuva. Rav B'tzalel Jolti in the Mishnah Siyayvitz Rav B'tzalel Jolti writes in uh, his commentary of the Rambam Arachayim Simenon Dalid that the Rambam in fact holds there's no mitzvah of tshuva and that is because the Rambam reads that all the prophets prophecy that we have to do tshuva and the Jewish people will not be redeemed if we don't do tshuva and the Nevi'im promise and vouchsafe that Klal Yisrael will do tshuva in the end of days and then they'll be redeemed like it says V'hoyo ki yavoyo lecha kol dvarim v'shavta Hashem lo'ikecha so the Rambam learns that it's not a mitzvah, but it's a promise. The Rambam learns tshuva is not a command. It is a promise. Vishavta, you will do tshuva. And since you will do tshuva, one of the basic tenets of mitzvahs is that God does not reckon something to be a mitzvah if it, you don't have free choice whether to do it or not. And since tshuva may not be in our capacity because God is saying, I will make sure that the Jewish people do do tshuva. The Rambam learns it's not a mitzvah, but more of Rabbi Yisai, we are going to offer a new approach to it for the Rambam. Why the Rambam learns there is no mitzvah in the Torah to do tshuva. So next time somebody says to you, they're a Baal tshuva, you say, you're a Baal what? What's tshuva? So what do you mean tshuva? Tshuva is something you have to do. You can say, no, you don't have to do tshuva. There's no mitzvah in the Torah. See, he'll say he holds like the Ramban. But you're going to tell him the Rambam holds. There's no mitzvah of tshuva. See, I see you're all smiling. He said, I can't believe it. Not only is davening going to be shorter this year, because in my shul they're going to cut out some of the singing, but now I just heard a shir, you don't even have to do tshuva. This is going to be the best Yom Naram season ever. Well, Marv Rabbi Sai, don't get too excited yet. Okay. What is the pshat in the Rambam? Why would tshuva not be a mitzvah? Comes the Rambam, comes the Vitzel Petterberg, and he says, again, reviewing the four components of tshuva, and they are aziva sachet, stopping to sin. 
So let's say you, you are somebody, you come into shul, and before you put on your talis and tefillin, you take out your phone, and you check it out. You know, who called me today? Uh, let me check out my, uh, my texts, my whatsapps, my emails. You can't do that. You can't be busy on a phone in a shul. It's the house of God. It's a place of prayer. You're not even allowed to look at your phone if you have tefillin on. You're not allowed to distract your mind from your tefillin. You're not allowed to be mesiach das from your tefillin. So, on, uh, on Yom Kippur, so you're going to say, O shamnu baganu gazalnu. Say, Rabbi Yid, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're saying, I'm saying, Vidoy, for bringing my phone into Shul. Do you plan on doing it tomorrow? Yeah. So what are you doing? That's not tshuva. Tshuva is, you don't bring it into the Shul. So if that's the case, you need to do aziva sachet, but um, along with aziva sachet is you have to accept upon. In other words, the first thing is you stop. You stop. You leave it in the car. But we ask you, Rabir, are you going to do it again? You say, Why are you asking if I can do it again? I don't. Do, I don't do it anymore. Yeah, but are you going to do it again? Why are you asking me that? It's in my car now. Why are you asking if I can do it again? Rabir, will you do it again in six months? Okay, fine. You want me to say I won't do it again in six months? I won't ever bring the phone into shul. And he, um, he, you say to the guy, I'm not doing it anyway. Why do you need me to say I'll never do it again? We say, Rabbi, do you want to do tshuva? It's not enough to stop. You need to commit not to do it again. And you say, come on, that's just semantics. Once I've stopped, it sort of goes without saying I'll never do it again. But this is what we're required to do. It's not enough to stop. You need to commit not to do it Now, once you've stopped, it is actually easy to commit not to do it again. Furthermore, regret. Regret is very much connected to vidoy. Because even if a person just regrets, Nevertheless, it's not enough just to feel remorse and feel regret for what one did. One has to actually say to God, Look, Rebbe Hashem, I sinned against you. So let's say we say to a, a Jew, Rabbi Yid, How's your uh, Limanat Torah? Yeah, right, Limanat Torah. The truth is, I waste a little bit too much time. You know what? I have more time in the day that I can make use of. Uh, I feel bad about it. Say, very good. You're on the path to tshuva. We say, but Rabbi, we, we need you to do something else. We need you to say to the Rabbani Shalom that you're guilty, that you could have done better. Say, what, do you, what do I need to say it? I feel bad and the Rabbani Shalom knows what's in my heart. Just say it. So he says, fine, I'll say it. Once you have regret, it's it's a piece of cake to say vidu it's not really a big deal so the truth is there are two hard parts of tshuva and there are two easy parts of tshuva the hard parts are stop sinning once you've stopped it's easy to commit not to do it again the hard part is feel regret once you feel regret it's easy to um, to confess now and here is where Rav Itzla has a brilliant idea Rav says, let me ask you a question. Let's say God would never have given the mitzvah of tshuva. Let's say if a person did not vera, he ate chazer, he ate basar b'chalav, he ate basar oif and chalav. Let's say a person echveis, spoke by chazar sashat. Let's say there is no such thing as tshuva. And you're stuck, and you have this avera on your record, and there's no way to remove it. Question. Would you be allowed to do it again? Let's say if a person ate a, a cheeseburger. There's no way to get it off your record. It's, it's on your record forever. It doesn't matter. You could go to, uh, you know, uh, you could go to driver's uh, class and you could uh, try to get your points. No, let's say you're stuck with this uh, stain on your record. Would you be allowed to eat another cheeseburger? And the answer is, of course not. Because the same Torah 
that said, don't eat a cheeseburger, continues to say, don't eat a cheeseburger. So the fact that you did it once doesn't allow you to do it again. So even if there was never a mitzvah of tshuva, you would have to stop sinning. Because if you would sin again, you'd get punished more. In other words, the reason we have to do azivas hachet has nothing to do with tshuva. Because even if it was not a concept of tshuva, you would still have to stop sinning. Because Rebbein Shalom said, So just because you violated it once, you could violate it again. Azivas hachet has absolutely nothing to do with tshuva. Of course you have to stop sinning. Let's say there was no gift of tshuva. You have to stop sinning so you don't do the other again. Tshuva is so easy because the hard parts of tshuva are not associated with tshuva. You can't consider them difficult ingredients in the path of tshuva because they're not even affiliated with tshuva. What is tshuva? Tshuva is a way to clean your sin. But we would have to stop sinning even if we couldn't clean our sin. We would have to forsake our bad ways even if we couldn't cleanse ourselves. We know there's a concept. For every sin a person does, a person there's oinesh, there's oinshem. For every sin of a person, a person is punished. What kind of punishment? You know, this is a concept that nobody likes to talk about. But, the Yom Adin is coming. We believe in reward and punishment. That in the next world, for every Avera, there is an Oynesh, which is Rav Amar, worth than all the afflictions of this world. Now what if a person sins endlessly, and every day he commits thousands of others, for each and every Ahira, one has to pay the price. You know the story with the Gra, where they rush on the Lisa, where they, a wicked person who violated the most severe Ahira, and the man is about to eat an apple. And the girl says to this Noyef Reiseach Dana, don't forget to make a bracha. And the guy looked at him, don't forget to make a bracha. Of what significance is my yes or no bracha? And the girl says, no. Doesn't matter what kind of terrible things you've done. You'll pay for this also. There's nothing true of you. I have a question. Rebellion is not in the even one faith. I remember uh, Rev. Victor Miller used to say over that when Rev. Isaac Sher came to America, so, you know, in America there were wealthy people. So in Slabotka, Rev. Isaac Sher would speak about Godless Adam. But in America he would speak to Balabatim about Gehenna. Now Rev. Miller would say, money he didn't get. <laughs> But he picked up a few Talmidim to bring back to Slabotka. One of them was Rabbi Victor Miller. But, you know, in our generation, we can't even talk about it. So you're going to tell a teenager, no, they don't have the emotional wherewithal even to hear about it. But it doesn't mean this is not a basic tenet of Judaism. Animavin be'amunah shalem da'abar Yisbar Shemot gives reward to those who does miserable. Let's say there would be no such thing as tshuva, and the person echves, he was mavatel Torah one day. Does that mean he could be mavatel Torah on day two? He'll be punished for day two. So even if there was no such thing as uh, removing previous sin, you would still have to stop sinning, so you don't incur further punishment. So you can't. Say, tshuva is hard. It's so hard to stop sinning. Stopping to sin has nothing to do with tshuva. What does stopping to sin have to do with tshuva? You got to stop sinning because the Torah says don't do it. And even if you did it once, the Torah still says don't do it again. It has nothing to do with tshuva. What does azivas hachet have to do with tshuva? The Torah says, 
So just because you spoke Lashon Har for an hour, you still cannot violate Loiselech Rachel Ba'amecha. You have to be Oizev Chetai. What about Charata? Charata has nothing to do with Tshuva. Rabbi Nuyoyna writes, Charata comes from a recognition and realization that you did something foolish. Excuse the expression. I don't know, I'm using it just to clarify the point. Charata is a recognition that you did something S-T-U-P-I-D. I don't even like to say it, but that's what charata is. You did something even more than foolish. It was, it was so not smart. Was it worth it? Oh, let me buy myself a, a can of soda. What should I do with my wallet? Well, I'm too lazy to put it in my pocket. Let me just put it down on the floor. I'm sure nothing will happen. And you buy yourself a Coke and you turn around and your wallet is gone. You say to yourself, what kind of shaita am I? Why would I do that? Just because I was a little bit lazy, I wouldn't guard my wallet? Somebody comes to you to have a conversation. So, you know what he's going to talk about. So, get out of it. Run away. Or talk about something else. What do you gain out of discussing Pliny? Why do you... And when you... A uh, charata is coming to the realization that what you did was foolish. was dumb. It wasn't worth it. What is charata? Rabbi Yoyna says, Mel, Sisi! Look, what did I do? Why wasn't I worried about the, the punishment? I mean, if a person is a mammon... We believe there's Oynesh for an Avera. And Oynesh is worse than uh, losing $1,000. Was it worth losing $1,000 to do X, Y, and Z? Of course not. How could I have been so foolish? Says the Rabitzel Petterberg, what does Charata have to do with Tshuva? Let's say there was no such thing as Tshuva. Let's say if a person did an Avera, it was on their record forever. Like the Umay Sa'ilam, they can't wipe out a sin. They shouldn't have regret for what they did. They shouldn't realize what they did was foolish. It is not something, it is not a recognition that's dependent on cleansing your sin. It's a recognition of realizing that what you did was empty. So the truth is, stopping to sin is very hard, but has nothing to do with tshuva. Regret is very hard, but it's got nothing to do with tshuva. Tshuva means those things we need to do to remove the sin. And you know what they are? That once you stop bringing your phone into shul, you need to accept, I'll never bring it into shul again. That's so easy. If anyway, you're leaving it in the car, so why don't you just accept not to do it again? You're not doing it anyway. Once you've accepted, okay, I'm not going to discuss people with uh, yentas. Once you've accepted to, to take certain precautions that you're not going to do, it's very easy to, to in other words, once you've stopped sinning, so it's very easy to accept. Once you really regret what you did, confession is a piece of cake. And therefore the Torah tells you, this mitzvah that I'm giving you, that until this missile was given, when you did an Avera, was on your record from then. And any way you would have to stop the Avera. And any way you would have to regret. But now all you need to do to get it off the record is just accept not to do it again. And say with your mouth what you did. It is so, so easy. It is so easy. What do you mean it's easy? It's not easy to stop sinning. That's true. But you have to stop sinning. And once you do it, it is so easy to accept not to do it again. It's not easy to have regret. It's not. But you need to regret what you did, whether there's tshuva or not. And once you do regret, vidoy is very easy. You know how easy tshuva is? Beficha! Vidoy. Uvulvavcha! Kabbalah al asid. But what about the hard parts? They're hard, but they're not part of tshuva. They're not... Mesiaches to Tshuva. Says Rav Itzala. When we call Anizkar Lael based on the above, Ki Etzem HaTshuva Dover Kamaoid. The actual Tshuva is very easy. Ki Hinei Shnei Ikrei HaTshuva Shal Azibu Sachiv HaKarata. 
the two main principles of tshuva forsaking your sin, and we get im amnam ki udavar kasha, even though they're very difficult to conquer the yetzer and to leave your sin. Ulam They're not really relevant to tshuva. Because even if there would have been no gift of tshuva, then Hashem should be moichel and forgive l'shavei kesh pesha. Even if an avera is a permanent record, you still would have to stop. You know why? So you don't get more punishment. So you can't say tshuva is hard because of aziva. You got to do aziva anyway. You can't say tshuva is hard because of charata. Because even without tshuva. If you recognize what the repercussions are, you would regret it. But the two added dimensions of tshuva, which are germane to tshuva, namely vidui and kabbalah, and they come as a special way to cleanse your sin. And if you don't do them, God will not cleanse. But they're so easy, because once anyway I have to stop sinning, so it's easy to accept not to do it again. Once anyway, I have to regret. It's easy to be makabal upon myself. Um, it's, uh, it's easy to say vidoy. However, that which Hashem requests of a sinner, rak only because the actual tshuva, the hainu vidu dvar makabal believe, who beemes davar kal maoid is very, very easy. Now it's interesting, Reb Itzala implies Reb Itzala implies that and the Rambam implies Vidoy um, is really connected not only to Charata but to Kabbalah ala Asr. If you look in the Rambam, the Rambam says you need to articulate your Kabbalos. And that's going to be very important um, as we're about to see. So let's, let's read Ravitzala's upshot here. Says Ravitzala Pethagor. Ulam, es asher so soy fim aziva sachet. If coupled with aziva sachet, yu chalahasa gam machilo sirho if in the end anyway I need to stop sinning and in order to achieve mechila which is a great a gift which is a finding that is a treasure of great spoils all God asks of me is Kim Laza Dark Lishmar Tava Mitzah Shay Mukhak Lishmar Sala Soisa, even without it. So the truth is, if you think about it, Shuva is such a madnas chinam. Why? Because anyway we have to stop sinning. Anyway we have to re- regret. All we have to do to get the erasing of sin, the slicha machil khapara is Kabbalah la Asid and Vidoy, which is a piece of cake. So think about what the Yibam Shalom did for us. He says, my entire kinder, look, I understand it's hard to stop sinning, but you guys got to do it anyway. I understand it's hard to regret, but you have to do it anyway. So I'm going to give you a little uh, a, a, a gift here. Since you have to do it anyway, if you just add a little bit to your Aziva, namely Kabbalah la Asid, you add a little bit to your Charata, namely Vidoy, then I'm going to cleanse your sin. You say, Rebbe why would you cleanse our sin? Anyway, we have to stop sinning. Rebbe Hashem says, I'm just asking you to do a little tiny thing. Ki karoiv eilecha hadavar me'oid. Just say vidoy. Just kabbalah. And then, through what you had to do anyway, you could get off your abed. Marvra Boisai, we could suggest an amazing interpretation of the Rambam. The Rambam holds tshuva is not a mitzvah. 
just if you do tshuva, you say vidoy. And the question is, how could tshuva not be a mitzvah? And I believe, according to Rav Itzla, it's so obvious why tshuva is not a mitzvah. You know why tshuva is not a mitzvah? Because the mitzvah was already a mitzvah. The Torah says, umikdashai tiro. So anyway, you can't talk during Navani. You can't bring the phone in. So you say, oh, do I have to do tshuva? Why would I need a mitzvah of tshuva? There's still a mitzvah of umikdash tiro. You can't talk, you can't bring in the phone. What does tshuva got to do with it? You couldn't do it originally. You couldn't do it to begin with. I don't need another mitzvah of tshuva. The original mitzvah, I have a question. The Torah says, say lech rachel ba'amech. Don't speak Lashon Hara. So the guy spoke Lashon Hara. Now he wants to know, do I have to do tshuva? You say, Reb Yid, you need to stop sinning because if you speak Lashon Hara again, you're going to violate again. So you don't need a mitzvah of tshuva. Why would tshuva be a mitzvah? I can't do it again because the Torah says not to do it. So therefore the Rambam says, when you do tshuva, which you know why you have to do it, not because there's a mitzvah of tshuva, because the Torah said don't do it the first time. So you certainly can't do it the second time. Elamai, if I want to repair what I did, I say vidoy. So now the question is, why does the Rambam only say vidoy? According to what we're saying, the Rambam should say, Kishaya said tshuva, Yisvada v'yikabel al atzmoi, not to do it again. Why went the Rambam simple? So, look in this amazing Meshach Chachma. The Meshach Chachma says, Ben is boinein, the shame tshuva, k'fi ma'ashamay roshma. Think about the fact that the name tshuva, based on what its name indicates, eich nechshev, it's the mitzvah. How could you consider it a mitzvah? Sheyashiv mikisla v'layach da'ayv, that you should repent from your sliding and not sin again. How I belong a mitzvah, even without a mitzvah. Mitzvah the oimed lovely laver a mitzvah Hashem Yisbarach. Let's say there's no mitzvah of tshuva, you still have to keep the mitzvahs in the Torah. V'chi b'shul sha'avar v'shanuba. Just because I repeatedly violated a mitzvah, hutra lo isal kedaitech, I could do it again. The Masha Chachma says. One second, let me change the batteries. The Nebuchadnezzar Chachma says, You know why I'm now to do the Aveira again? Because the Torah said, Don't do it the first time. Hineho Azhara, Harishaina, the first warning, Hamonata Mechote Teram Shechata, that stopped us, that was trying to restrain us from sinning before we sinned, Himonata Mechote Gam Achari Shechata, still stopping us from repeating it again. The Nebuchadnezzar Chachma says, how could tshuva be a mitzvah? Why would I need a mitzvah of tshuva? The Torah said, don't eat basar b'chalav. So the guy ate once. He still can't do it again because the Torah still says, don't do it. So I need a mitzvah of tshuva to say, don't do it again. It's the first mitzvah that said, don't do it, that continues to say, don't do it. So I don't need a mitzvah of tshuva. It's just, the, the mitzvah of tshuva is, since anyway I have to stop, when I stop, I have to say vidoy. Amna mitzvah sa tshuva shal zet sarch mitzvah pratis hu sheim chata v'oizav es chatay mitzvah lehesvadois ulahagid lefnei Hashem isbarach ki yodeya ba'atzmai shechata umavakish kapara. Now we're saying anyway you would have to do charata also based on Rav Itzla. I would add that eh, anyway I would have to do charata and recognize that what we did is foolish. But why doesn't the Rambam say, and when you do tshuva, you need to accept upon yourself not to do it again? And I believe the Meshach Chachma addresses this. He says, I, that which we're, we need, you need to think, that you're not going to uh, return to your stumbling, 
That's part of Vidoy. Now, based on what would anybody say that part of Vidoy is Kabbalah ala Asid? I think it's very simple. The Rambam, Nechaz Tshuva, Perk Aleph, Halach Aleph, when he talks about the function of Vidoy, he says, we read it, he says, V'tzorach lehez vadois b'sfasav v'loymar in yonim elu shagomar b'libay. Part of Vido is articulating your commitments. So Kabbalah ala asid in a way is part of Vido. In that case, there's no mitzvah of tshuva. The mitzvah of tshuva is the first command that said don't violate in the first place. It's just if I do what I need to do, namely I stop sinning, and I regret, when I do so, then I'm obligated to say vidoy. Aval ala tshuva, ba'atzma in l'chazil mitzvah chadosh, how could you consider tshuva nu mitzvah? Zulas ha'tzivuyim shekvar netztava aleim, more than the original command that we're still commanded on. V'zehu baror, and this is clear. And therefore when the Torah says that this mitzvah is not overseas, is not me'ever la'yam, in a way, tshuva is, is extremely difficult because the prerequisite to tshuva is not easy. It is not, nobody said it was easy to stop sinning. Nobody said it's easy to regret. But everybody agrees that you have to stop sinning unrelated to tshuva and you need to regret unrelated to tshuva because the very same Torah that said don't do it continues to tell us don't do it. And once we do what we need to do, then in order to access the gift of tshuva, that is actually quite simple. It's beficha, it's in your mouth, vidoy, uvavavcha, it's in your heart, kabbalah al asid, la asoy So Yvon Shem should give us siyata deshmaya to fulfill the prerequisites of tshuva, to, to be yazoy vrasha darkoy, and to have charata. And once we're able to do that, the rest of it, the Yiman Shalom tells us, is, is uh, something which is not difficult. And therefore the Rambam amazingly learns tshuva is not a mitzvah. Rav Zolti learns that the reason it's not a mitzvah is because it's a havtacha, that we will do tshuva. But the Meshachachma learns, and we're sort of expanding that based on Rav Yitzvah, the reason why it's not a mitzvah is because it always was a mitzvah. And that is the original command not to do it continues to say, don't do it again. Okay, Marv Rabbi thanks for listening. Have a great day. Rabbi? Yes. So, so. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.